uh, earlier in part one, we talked about the Eddington limit, and we were looking at that in terms of uh, basically, in a very simple way, uh, a feeding constraint on on supermassive black holes. And we came up with the Eddington limit in terms of luminosity being equal to, for an object of mass m, being equal to 4 pi times the speed of light, mass of the proton, the mass of the object, supermassive black hole, gravitational constant, and something called the Thompson cross-section for electrons, sigma t. And I just want to briefly go over some of those things so we can apply it to a star. But um, if we look here, the arrangement we talked about was we have a supermassive black hole and the accretion disk, and we have infalling ionized gas coming into the accretion disk. And uh, that increases the illumination produced by the accretion disk. And the question was, well, if you just keep putting more and more uh, mass in, will the luminosity just keep going up and up and up? And we argued that that would not happen, that there would be a limit. And that's where the uh, Eddington limit comes in. In order to explain this, we took a look at a photon leaving the accretion disk and interacting with the incoming gas particles. And we explained that the photon has a much greater chance of interacting with the electrons than with the protons. But the protons are coupled to the electrons, so whatever happens to the electrons is, in a sense, going to happen to the protons. And we had to introduce the idea of the Thompson cross-section for electrons. We showed an expression for sigma t. And then we argued that the cross-section for electrons was over a million times larger than the cross-section for the protons. So in the calculations, we only had to really worry about the cross-section for electrons. And that is what sigma t means. These two are actually equal. And what we showed was that by using the uh, cross-section, we could show that the force, the radiative force on protons, we could set that equal to the radiative, to the gravitational force on protons. And in working that out, we could come up with an expression for the luminosity. And that, uh, the Eddington limit on luminosity, and that's this expression over here. Now th this also, you can think of this as applying also to a star. Here, here's a star, and we have illumination coming out from the center of the star, causing a radiative pressure near the surface of the star and on material along the way, too. And if that pressure, radiative pressure, is, is large enough, it'll overcome the gravitational uh, constraints on, on, on the star. And the, the radiative pressure might become large enough to actually blow away the, uh, the surface of the star. So we just wanted to take a, a look now at different stars, given their luminosity and their mass, to see how they compare to this expression. So this expression is plotted here. Here's the Eddington luminosity limit. 4 pi c, mass of the proton, mass of the particular star, gravitational constant, and the Thompson cross-section. So that's the theoretical expression. Then what is shown here in units of solar mass are the mass of different stars and their luminosity. And the luminosity is in units of solar luminosity. So here's the sun. Its mass on this scale is 1, and its luminosity is 1. And you can see that as the mass goes up and the luminosity goes up, 
there seems to be a limit. The Eddington limit is approached where the luminosity and the mass of the star can't get become any, any larger. Because as I explained, the star would basically rip its surface off. Uh, some of the stars here are familiar ones, Betelgeuse, Canopus, Vega, Cirrus, uh, RMC136A1, that's in one of the uh, satellite uh, clouds, um, I think it's LMC1. Uh, the mass and luminosity are not well known for that star, but it's supposedly the most massive star. And then there's a pistol star, that's also a massive star, bright star located uh, near the center of our, of our Milky Way. And then there's the familiar stars, but the point is, it seems to be reaching a limit. It looks like there's some regions on here that you could uh, fit a line to, and since this is a, basically a log-log plot, uh, it looks like for different cases the luminosity would be proportional to the mass uh, to some, some power, where that power is actually the slope on this scale. So that's the luminosity, Eddington limit, and approximate parameters for several selected stars. And you can see the Eddington limit looks like it's an actual real thing. And uh, what we may do in the future, we may have a part two. Uh, this is part two. We may have a part three. And what we'll look at in that case, we'll go back to the uh, uh, supermassive black hole and th those photons that were coming out that were interacting with the incoming gas particles. We'll take a look at calculating what the energy of those photons are. So that's what we might try doing in, in part three.